Uh, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Colin. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a good song, that one, isn't it? Um, so this morning, I want to speak about the fire of God uh, and to encourage us uh, towards a greater desire for God to burn within us uh, and all that that means. Uh, you've probably heard the phrase um, that's used about people sometimes and say someone's really on fire for God. Uh, we often hear it about young Christians who seem to be particularly passionate about Jesus and about their faith in him. And sometimes I think we can feel a bit cold in comparison to this kind of person. Um, but what we need really is not so much to be on fire for God, but is to have God burning within us and to allow him to bring his fire to every part of our lives. We're told in Hebrews that our God is a consuming fire. So are we ready to allow him to access all areas and burn in us as he desires? The song we just sang gives many effects of doing this or looked at another way, the reasons that we need it. To burn up every trace of sin to bring the light and glory in, for strength to always do what's right, for grace to conquer in the fight, for power to walk the world in white, to make our weak hearts strong and brave, to live a dying world to save. Those are all reasons why we need the fire of God to burn within us. Jesus said, I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. It's Jesus's desire to come to us with his fire. And that's because he knows that his fire is necessary for us to live our lives to the full in him. John the Baptist spoke of this uh, when he was preparing people for Jesus's ministry. He said to them, he said, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable, with unquenchable fire. It's wonderful, isn't it, that we can be baptised with the Holy Spirit now and that he can burn up the chaff in us now. And we don't have to wait until the final judgment. I think that just by being alive, being human, we pick up a lot of chaff. But we must not resist the spirit or quench the spirit. But we must allow him to burn up the chaff wherever he needs to in our lives. Uh, we're given another image in 1 Corinthians chapter three we'll turn there briefly uh, you don't have to turn there uh, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 12 um, still talking about fire uh, I'll read from 11 Paul says for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold silver precious stones wood hay or straw each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each has done if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives he will receive a reward if anyone's work is burned up he will suffer loss though he himself will be saved but only as through fire so we can see that our own good works are like wood and hay and straw and they will not stand up to God's fire. But we can allow him to burn them up now and build with his precious things that are like gold and silver. The Bible has a lot to say about God refining his people like gold and silver. Colin actually read um, in one of the Psalms, one of the verses. Um, I didn't actually choose to use that one today but that's one of one reference in many of God refining us um, in Malachi 3 where it's speaking about Jesus coming it says he is like a refiner's fire 
and a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord, and it will be pleasing to the Lord. Peter says in his first letter that you rejoice in your salvation, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, though it is tried by fire, though it is perished through fire, may be found to result in the praise and glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Are we ready for God to refine us like this, or as he chooses, so that our faith will be strengthened and purified, so that our offerings will please God? There's a song that I really love called Purify My Heart. Uh, the second verse and the chorus say this, they say, Purify my heart, cleanse me from within and make me holy. Purify my heart, cleanse me from my sin deep within. Refine as fire, my heart's one desire is to be holy. Set apart for you, Lord, I choose to be holy. Set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. I think that it's a great song, uh, and I'm sure that it reflects all of our hearts to some degree. But are we ready to offer ourselves to God like this? It needs to be a daily thing. The burnt offerings of the Old Testament give us an insight into this. They were primarily personal and voluntary offerings for individual Israelites. But there was a burnt offering every morning and every evening on the altar. They were whole offerings. The animal, the whole animal minus the skin, was totally consumed on the altar. And the animals offered had to be of the highest quality. The priests were given the skin as payment for their service, for their part in it. Uh, and during the offering, both the priest and the one whose offering it was had a role to play. So it was a very personal thing, a personal experience for the person offering the sacrifice. And the purpose of the burnt offering was to atone for the sin of the offerer and to gain God's acceptance. The smoke ascended to heaven, a pleasing aroma to God. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, is the ultimate fulfilment of the burnt offering. His physical life was completely consumed. He ascended to God and God was pleased with the sacrifice. His garment was distributed, his covering, his garment was distributed to those who were in charge of the sacrifice. But most importantly, his sacrifice atoned for our sins and restored our relationship with God. Now we are called to follow Jesus and his example. Romans 12 verse 1 says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. We need to come daily before God. And present ourselves as burnt offerings pleasing to him through jesus's death we can die to self we can die to sin and god can burn up the chaff and refine us and purify us later on in romans 12 it says do not be slothful in zeal be fervent in spirit serve the lord the word fervent here means to be hot or to boil with heat. I was thinking about that word and there's a great example of a man who was fervent in spirit. His name is Jim Elliott. He was one of the missionaries who gave their life reaching the Alka Indians in Ecuador. I'm sure many people know the story. Um, and I think we probably could all say that God's fire burned strongly in him. Uh, I want to share, share a quote from his journal. Let me just share the screen because it's um, helpful sometimes to uh, not just have a quote read to us, but um, let me just bring it up. Um, but to see the words, um, sometimes it's useful. So let me share the screen. I've got a couple of quotes from different people. Um, 
let me just share this. So this is a quote from Jim Elliott, um, not this on the screen yet. Uh, shortly before I think he went to um, Ecuador and um, it's, it's taken from his journals and it just sort of shows really his heart and where he stood before God, I suppose. It's really um, encouraging. So I'm trying to move on. Screen. There we go. Um, I'm going to move. The, uh... So it says, he makes his ministers a flame of fire. He's quoting a psalm. And then he asks himself, am I ignitable? God, deliver me from the dread asbestos of other things. Saturate me with the oil of the spirit that I may have, that I may be a flame. But flame is transient, short lived. Canst thou bear this, my soul, short life? In me there dwells the spirit of the great short lived, whose zeal for God's house consumed him. Make me thy fuel, flame of God. It's quite a prayer, isn't it? Um, and I'm sure that none of us feel like we have quite the same level of zeal as that. But perhaps we should. Perhaps we can. The last part of this quote is from an Amy Carmichael uh, poem, which I learned. I was looking this up. Um, and again, the poem is a prayer. Um, and again, I'm going to share that it's just the next page. So I just want to read this poem of Amy Carmichael's. From prayer that asks that I may be sheltered from winds that beat on thee, from fearing when I should aspire, from faltering when I should climb higher, from silken self, O captain free, thy soldier who would follow thee, from subtle love of softening things, from easy choices, weakenings, not thus are spirits fortified, not this way went the crucified. Mm -hmm. From all that dims thy calvary, O Lamb of God, deliver me. Mm -hmm. Give me the love that leads the way, the faith that nothing can dismay, the hope no disappointments tire, the passion that will burn like fire. Let me not sink to be a clod, make me thy fuel, flame of God. That's what we need and want, isn't it? That we would have that passion that would burn like fire. Now, reading these, it's easy to be discouraged and think, oh, we're not like that. So, so don't be discouraged and thinking, oh, what wonderful saints Jim Elliot and Amy Carmichael are uh, or were. And that, you know, I have just a poor excuse of a fire in my heart. Um, I've got one more quote um, for you if you're thinking like that. Um, it's one I've shared before, I think Ron Bailey put me onto it, but it's from William Booth, who's the founder of the Salvation Army and who wrote that great song uh, that we sang earlier. So here's the quote from, from William Booth. The tendency of fire is to go out. Watch the fire on the altar of your heart. Anyone who's tended a fireplace fire knows that it needs to be stirred up occasionally and fed and the ashes removed. We do need stirring up, don't we? I think that we often need stirring up. And we can stir ourselves up, uh, or other people can stir us up. And God certainly stir us up. Jesus is also very understanding and compassionate and tender with us. Isaiah said of him, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not quench or snuff out. Jesus handles us gently. And if we are like a bruised reed, he won't break us, but he'll mend us and he'll make us strong in his might. If we are like a smouldering wick, he won't snuff us out completely, but he'll pour in the oil of the Holy Spirit and he'll set us to burn brightly once more. He may have to trim the wick, that might be painful, but he will not extinguish us. Be encouraged. Jesus sees your need and he can fill it. Jesus sees your feebleness and mine and he can strengthen us and he desires to. Even Timothy 
uh, who Paul wrote to, needed some of this encouragement. Paul said to him, I remind you to fan into flame or stir up the gift of God, which is in you. So we're in good company then. Let us do what we can to stir ourselves up, to fan into flame what God has given us. God wants to burn stronger and brighter in each one of us. The two disciples who the risen Jesus spoke to on the road to Emmaus said to each other, did our hearts not burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened up to us the scriptures? And I was thinking, wow, that's a great recipe for fanning the flames in us. Spend time with Jesus, talking with him and allowing him to reveal himself to us from the scriptures that we're reading. So then, brothers and sisters, I'm drawing to a close. Is God burning within us? Have we given him access to our hearts? Will we allow him to burn up all that is in us that is of no value and to refine us with his fire? Let us stir ourselves up and stir each other up to love and good works. Let us fan into flame the gift of God that is in us. Let us come to Jesus and ask for the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit that he might burn bright and strong within us. Let us be encouraged that that is his desire for us also. I wanted to um, sandwich my message uh, with songs. <laughs> uh, so Colin's allowed me to do that. I'm going to share one more song, which is O Thou Who Camest From Above. Um, another song about fire. And I just think it really sums up, really, what our desire is. Um, so I'll share that and we can use that as response. Um, we've got loads of time left now, Colin. So <laughs> um, I'll hand over to you once I've shared this song. but. Um, let's just come to the Lord and, and ask him for all that we need uh, to burn in us, to, to burn up what needs to be burnt up, to give us passion where we've maybe grown cold, um, to fill us with this Holy Spirit that these things will be possible within us. Well, that inspirational message, and it's just inspired me to remember a few scriptures. So about fire and of course the fire is God's fire the fire comes from God and so this is Leviticus chapter 6 and it's one of the priestly duties to keep the fire burning on the altar it says Leviticus 6 12 and the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it it shall not be put out and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it. And he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. And <clears throat> there's this situation in this Old Testament. The fire, the fire had to always be burning on the altar. And it's, it's the priest's duty to 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 burn wood on it and to keep the fire to keep the fire going so the the Amen. fire was there Amen. the fire brings light the fire brings warmth the fire is is life but 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 it, it just needed the priest to bring bring the wood and there was a discipline in it and an order in it that every morning he had to lay lay the 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 uh, the wood on the altar and so on and then in to Chronicles chapter 21. This is the story of where David went wrong. He, 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 in the census, he numbered the people and then he's going to um, try and sort it out and so on by the grace of God. And do you remember he, he goes to Ornan and he buys the threshing floor? And so in verse 25, it says, um, well, verse 24, then David, the King David said to Ornan, no, I, but I will surely buy it for the full price, for I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor, for, nor offer burnt offerings with that which costs me nothing. So David gave Ornan 600 shekels of gold by weight for the place. 
And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called on the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire on the altar of the burnt offering. And David built the altar. Uh, he offered burnt offerings. He offered peace offerings. He called on the Lord. And God answered him. The fire, the fire came from, from God, but it came on the altar. And there, I think there's this principle all the way through the scripture that the fire is on the altar. And then in in two two chronicles, I'll, I'll just read two scriptures and I'll stop. The in chapter one, uh, so David didn't didn't build the temple as we know, but he gave God showed him the pattern for the temple, and uh, Solomon was going to build the temple. And in his early days, Solomon was a man on fire for for God, and I know he went wrong later on and that's a very sober lesson in itself but he was on fire it says in the, in this chapter one uh solomon i'm <clears throat> oh, sorry verse six i'll read it there uh well let's read verse five and and the, now the bronze altar that bezalel the son of uri the son of her had made he put before the tabernacle of the lord solomon put for the before the tabernacle of the lord Solomon and the assembly, the assembly sought him there. They sought God there at the altar. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. There's something in that, isn't there? I mean, what in the natural you think, well, what is the use of that? No, you know, you just uh, these are offerings just get burnt up for God. And they could have been used to feed people or something, but they're burnt up for God. But there's something in the heart, isn't there, that, that, that he wanted to so much to offer uh, to God. And it, it, it continues like that through two Chronicles. But let me just read you one more scripture, and it's in chapter 3. Now, Solomon, this is verse 1, sorry. Now, Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah where the Lord had appeared to his father David at the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Solomon began to build the temple. He built the temple on the altar. The temple, God's temple is built on the altar and the fire is on the altar. The fire comes from God. We haven't got to manufacture the fire. We can't manufacture fire we can't make ourselves alive we don't have to we we, we are god's priests uh, as andy quoted romans 12 he says present your your bodies present your bodies as a living sacrifice bring the wood and be disciplined about it be ordered about it and do it bring the wood and it is 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 god who 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 sends the fire and makes us alive praise god for that and but the, the the whole his whole church his te his temple is built on the the place of the altar. This is who this is who 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 God is. And um, and finally, uh, one of the most inspirational messages I've ever heard about anything, but it's on this topic, was from Mr. North, and I think it's called Fire. On the altar i think it is called fire on the altar i don't know if anybody else but you can find it on ron bailey's uh, bible base site fire on the altar so if you've been inspired by andy listen to mr north and be inspired by him <laughs> amen lord we do amen. praise you that you've <coughs> made us to burn lord you are you as we've heard it says our god is a consuming fire you burn lord you're on fire and you, we are made in your image and you've made us to burn. We thank you that we can burn for you. We can be alive. We can be on fire. It's our part to present the word, to present our bodies, a living sacrifice. But you, Lord, you are the one who provides the fire. We worship you and praise you, Lord. Amen. Um.